Well, hello, friends. Welcome to the Serenity OS update for March 2020. It's actually the first year anniversary of the monthly updates. So we've been going with these since March 2019. So it's pretty cool. Uh, now, before we begin, though, let me just tell you about sponsorship real quick. So the Serenity operating system and all of my content about it is always going to be free and open source. But if you would like to support my work and maybe one day make it possible for me to do this full time, then there are three donation options. So I'm on Patreon and GitHub sponsors for those interested in making a monthly donation. And I'm also on PayPal if you prefer making a one-time donation. And you can find links to all of these things in the description below. And of course, obviously a huge thank you to everybody who's already supporting me in some way on these platforms. Um, it's absolutely amazing to me how much support I've been getting and how much support this project is getting. And I now really do believe that we're going to be able to take this full time someday. Uh, not quite yet, but it's heading in that direction and it's really, really exciting. Um, so thank you everybody for pushing that dream forward. It's a weird dream, but I think it might happen. So exciting. Anyway, let's talk about March. So March this year has been all about JavaScript for me. Um, Pretty early into the month, I decided it's time we start building a JavaScript engine for Serenity because we already had the browser project going on, building a browser for it. And if you're doing a browser, it's inevitable. You're going to need JavaScript, right? So I was just kept pushing that forward and forward until eventually I figured might as well start. So we now have libjs and uh, libjs is the JavaScript interpreter for Serenity and you can talk to it using the JS REPL program uh, that Sergey added. And we can write out a simple little program here. Um, let's do something nice. Hello, A. And we would call friends. Look at that. Hello, friends. Very nice. Uh, it knows quite a few tricks. And we actually have a little test suite brewing here. I try to add new tests with every change I make lately. So uh, all the tests currently pass. It's uh, 37 of them. So that's pretty cool. Of course, uh, there will be more and more tests added as we go. And a whole bunch of people have been helping out with the JavaScript engine because it seems like I kind of unlocked something and people got really interested in, in uh, working on it. So that's been really awesome because my pace was pretty good, but then more people started helping out and the pace just got really, really good. Uh, and I, I really love how enthusiastic people became about it. So thanks everybody who worked on it uh, together with me. Now, um, the JavaScript engine, you can talk to it in, with the JS REPL, but I've also started integrating it with the browser. So if we open up the browser here, we can uh, run the little fun demo program. So this is a canvas element demo where we use mouse events uh, in JavaScript and we use them to draw into a canvas element with some random colors and stuff. So it's just a silly little thing, but um, it shows that we are actually making some pretty interesting stuff already possible with JavaScript in the browser. Uh, let me see if I can find the demo, it's here. So if we look at the source for this demo, it's um, using a canvas element, 2D context, uh, event listeners, um, randomness, and some painting, and an interval timer. So we got all kinds of things going on here, and it's already functioning. So I'm very, very excited uh, about this. And then you can also see here that we now have bookmarks in the browser. So this is a feature that Emmanuel added. So the way that you make a bookmark is you, um, I don't know, you would go somewhere. So maybe we'll go to the GitHub sponsor page, which looks a little funny in dark mode. Uh, and if I wanted to bookmark this page, I just hit the star, bloop. Now it shows up in the bookmark bar. And then if I change my mind, I don't want to go back to this page and I can just unploop it by clicking the star again. So pretty basic, nice little feature that Emmanuel made. So thank you, Emmanuel, for that. Um, and oh, and I forgot to show that uh, we now support absolute positioned elements as well. So it's just a little thing, but this was contributed by Roman. So I was very happy that somebody else worked on the uh, libweb as well, not just me. 
Um, so what else has been up? Well, there's been all kinds of things happening. Uh, so we got some new stuff in the profiler, so I can show you some of that. Let me, um, I don't know, what are we gonna do? Let's run maybe, we can run the JavaScript test in the profiler, see what that looks like. So uh, we would run the throw basic test maybe. All right, and then we can um, open up the profile here to see what the test was actually doing. So new, uh, new in the profiling viewer now is we now have sample counts and self counts. Uh, previously, we could only see the sample counts. Now you can actually see how many of the samples are actually at this specific frame. Uh, and we can also switch over to percentage mode, which is really, really helpful for understanding the profile better. So these are kind of staple features of any profiler, but we didn't have them before. Now we have them. Pretty cool. Um, and, oh, and something else that's new is, let me show you. I'll bring up the um, inspector. So we'll connect to the about program. And... Uh, I can now actually browse the widget tree visually here by selecting different things in the uh, widget tree in the inspector. So it highlights them, which I really like. And, and not only that, but you can actually tweak some things. So we can change the text here, okay, to say, well, hello, friends. Oh, wow, that didn't even fit. Well, there we go. So uh, this is the RPC protocol that we use to implement the inspector. It actually now allows you to interact with objects uh, remotely. And it's still very limited, but you can um, set some object properties. And I think this is really, um, really exciting because um, once we can hook this thing up to a scripting language like JavaScript, it will become quite easy to sort of remotely control GUI applications. And uh, I think there's a lot of potential for cool stuff with that sort of feature. Uh, anyway, just wanted to show you that. So another subtle little thing that I just thought of is that <laughs> the tilde here. So previously we were not uh, collapsing the home directory into a tilde, uh, and now we do. It's a subtle little thing, but I, I really like that sort of thing. So <laughs> just thought I would mention it. Um, and um, we got some new apps. So first off, let me show you that uh, Ryan started working on a calendar app. So it's still very, very early stages, but uh, we have a basic calendar layout. Um, and um, that's, that's mostly all that there is so far. It's just a layout because this just brings up a little to-do. But uh, I think it's fun, fun that we start on a calendaring app because it's sort of a good fit, I think, for the Serenity vibe to have a have our own calendar app. We should probably make this thing theme aware, by the way. Um, and something else that we uh, started on, and actually Till started on, is a new game. So now we have Solitaire, uh, a, clearly a must-have app for any um, serious desktop operating system. And uh, I actually, I've, I've played quite a few games already here, but I've never beaten it. And I don't know if I'm just really bad at it or making stupid decisions or something, but still haven't won. Um, I'm not gonna, not gonna play a whole game now, but uh, Till was nice enough to uh, make it so that even if you don't win, you can just press F12 if you wanna see the win animations. So I'll show it to you right now. Check it out. Now, that's how you know it's a legit solitaire game. Uh, bouncy cards. Uh, very, very cool. So th thank you, Till, for adding solitaire to the, uh, to the desktop games collection, whatever. Um, and then, oh, let me show you some stuff in Hack Studio. So uh, Orico has been doing some pretty cool patches for Hack Studio. Um, for example, um, syntax highlighting is now themable, so it looks different in um, dark mode and in the default look. So if we switch to default, we can see it here. And we actually, now we also support JavaScript. Uh, so I can actually run this, oops, uh, run this JavaScript program here in Hack Studio and it uh, shows us the output on the console. 
And I think that's really sweet. Syntax highlighting for JavaScript, also new. It uses libjs to figure out how to highlight. And um, more cool stuff by Orico. Uh, we now can actually um, jump to include files. So if I control click on Stadio, it takes me to stadio.h. Very, very cool. Um, and uh, it's, it's really awesome to see that Hack Studio and other apps get love, even if I'm not working on them. Other people come in and uh, just find some little thing that they enjoy messing with, and it, it turns into these beautiful improvements. So very, very cool. Um, now let me show you the IRC client, because I worked on it just the other day a little bit, and uh, I added notification support. So let me send myself a private message here from another window. Hello friends, and we can see that we get a notification popping up here. And pretty cool, uh, I think. Uh, we have icons in the notifications now, and this vertical title bar that uh, Tibor came up with and I implemented. I think it, it's pretty kind of nice looking. I like it. Um, so um, that's that. <laughs> the IRC client still needs a lot of, a lot of love, but um, I'm happy to add a little bit to it. Um, and then, oh man, I think maybe that's everything really. Um, something that, uh, that deserves honorable mention, I think, is that uh, Ben uh, implemented toolchain caching on our Travis continuous integration instance or in our Travis setup. So now, instead of rebuilding the whole uh, compiler tool chain every time somebody pushes code, uh, we now actually reuse the tool chain unless we need to rebuild it. And that has taken, the time it takes Travis to, to run on a patch uh, used to take like 25 minutes or something, and now it's down to like a couple of minutes. And that's really, really awesome. If you're working on the system, you've probably felt this improvement. So thank you, Ben, for, for that stuff. I'm gonna switch to dark theme here so I match the um, my webcam window. Um, but yeah, this was, uh, I guess this was basically everything I had to show you uh, today. So uh, thank you very much for checking in and catching up with the project. It's really, really cool that we've been doing these for a year and it's really fun to go back and look at the one from a year ago and uh, to see just how the system has changed, how I've changed, how uh, things are just coming along. And I think this is going really well so far. And I'm really glad that you're all here to share this experience with me. So freaking awesome. Thanks everybody for hanging out. If you ever want to chat, you can find me in um, on IRC in the Serenity OS channel on Freenode together with all these other guys and girls. We're working on the system. Uh, come say hello. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.